Worldwide, nearly 350 million people have diabetes, and every 30 seconds, one of them has a lower limb amputated. One of the main causes is infected skin wounds. I'm Lisa Desai in Los Angeles, California, where doctors are using a new procedure that's transforming treatment for severe skin wounds. Skin ulcers can occur in people with uncontrolled diabetes because an overload of blood glucose can damage their nervous system to the point where they don't feel pain and may not notice injuries to their legs and feet. High blood sugar can also weaken the body's ability to fight infection and contribute to the narrowing and hardening of blood vessels, starving the skin of the essential nutrients it needs to heal. Also at risk are people with a compromised immune system, nerve damage or poor circulation. When skin wounds become severe, sometimes the only way for patients to save their legs is to undergo intense, painful skin grafting surgery. It went from a small injury to about, about this size. How does the wound feel right now? It feels like someone was taking a blowtorch to your leg. Wow. That's the kind of pain. Uh, it's very hot, burning. Barbara Kouris has a condition called vasculitis that impairs her blood circulation. It has caused a serious ulcer on her leg, which is infected and has led to gangrene. Dr. Lee Rogers says if the wound doesn't heal, she could lose her leg. Well, now we're going into the operating room where we'll actually perform the split thickness skin graft and apply it to the patient's wound. Okay. The operation is extremely painful, and Barbara has to undergo general anesthesia. The top two layers of skin will be taken from a strip on her thigh and grafted onto her freshly cleaned wound. So this is a dermatome, and it's basically like a wood planer. And what it does is it uh, allows us to take a, a, a set thickness of skin. So you're literally lifting skin from one part of her body and putting it on her wound. That's right. But we're gonna uh, mesh the skin. This is a carrier. So these are little grates right here. So just gonna uh, stretch out the, uh, the donor. Okay, here we go. So that's the patient's skin. That's the patient's own skin. Meshing the skin means doctors can cover larger areas and allows fluid to drain out. We're going to go ahead and place it on the recipient site, which has been prepped, and secure it down with staples. Barbara doesn't feel any pain now, but when she wakes up, she will have a second wound on the donor site on her upper thigh. It could take months to heal and will leave a permanent scar. I'm just going to let it sit. I'm not going to push it. Oh, honey, it's OK. It really OK, OK. The intensive and painful nature of this operation has pushed researchers to develop a new technology to treat skin wounds using a procedure called epidermal skin grafting that only takes the top layer of skin and can be done outside of the operating room. So what would you say are the advantages of epidermal skin grafting? Well, the largest advantage is that there's either minimal or no pain. And, and so patients are very apprehensive of having medical procedures done because of pain. And what's causing these ulcers? We see a lot of patients with large ulcers, and the, the major reason is because of diabetes. Diabetes is, is an epidemic in our country and around the world, and uh, diabetes can cause not only ulcers, but leads to infections and gangrene, and, uh, and it, it leads to limb loss. Number one reason for losing your leg in the United States is because of diabetes. Pamela Smith has a leg ulcer caused by diabetes, and today she's opted to go for the new type of epidermal skin graft. So you had a split thickness graft before. Can you show us what the donor site looks like? This one was six months ago. So these are the scars. There are two scars right here from the donor site for a split thickness skin graft. And is that, is that donor site painful? Not anymore, but it, it was for a while. It was annoying. It itched and hurt occasionally, but 
doesn't bother me too much except it's ugly. It will never go back to normal. It will never go back to the same color as the surrounding skin. It will always be either a little pinker or a little darker. This one is probably caused by venous insufficiency, so the veins aren't working very well to remove the blood from the leg and it kind of pools. The wound continues because of diabetes, and diabetes affects the cells as they're trying to heal, and uh, it also affects the circulation. Doctors are using a new device to perform the epidermal skin graft. It harvests skin in under an hour. So I'm applying the harvester, and we, we usually pick up a flat spot. Using heat and suction, the machine causes the top layer of Pamela's skin, called the epidermis, to bubble up and form blisters. This layer doesn't contain any nerves or blood vessels, allowing doctors to perform skin grafts without pain. And you can already see the blister starting to form through the little window there. Oh, wow. How does this feel on your leg? There really is no sensation. It's, it's fine. After 40 minutes, Pamela's skin is ready to be lifted, and the dozens of newly formed blisters will be cut off. Run the blade through. It's not nearly as much skin as you lifted from the split thickness graft. So how does that work? So these are, the idea is that these are little islands, and your skin grows pretty quickly. And these islands will just get bigger and bigger and bigger until they bump into one another, and then it'll fill in that entire space. We want to have fluid be able to drain out of this, so we take a needle and we just puncture it several times. And you can see it's going to cover most of the wound. Blood from the freshly cleaned wound supplies nutrients to the living clumps of epidermal cells, allowing them to survive and multiply, forming a lattice that in a few weeks or months becomes a new layer of skin. You can see there's a square mark here from where the uh, suction was placed against the thigh. Mm -hmm. and, and this will be completely healed. You can barely see that anything was done here aside from the mark, the square mark, but this will be completely healed within a week. Wow, and there's no pain there. Mm -mm. The technology is already starting to be used on patients with superficial burns and those who are too weak to undergo general anesthesia. And while it's only effective on small wounds at this stage, it's already starting to change lives. Hi, Mr. Kazaruni. Hello, how are you? Uh, good, I want to introduce you to Lisa. Hello. Mohamed Kazaruni had an ulcer on his foot from diabetes that was healed with an epidermal skin graft. His original skin graft broke open, and doctors were having a tough time treating the wound. It was very close to the bone, and, and uh, the bone may have been infected. He was really at risk for losing his leg at this level right here, which we call a below-the-knee amputation. They came and they said they're going to amputate my legs because, uh, because they took a lot of uh, tissue and it won't heal. And I told them, no, you can't do that. So we had a graft this area that was breaking open into a wound, and, uh, and we used an epidermal graft for that. It was a smaller area. We, we took it from his thigh and placed it on his foot, and it healed over the course of, of about three weeks. And it's working. I don't need to lose my legs. As the technology develops and spreads, it's hoped that thousands more people will be able to follow in Mr. Kazaruni's footsteps.